I'm seeing a lot of people sharing the same notion that I'm comparing the nine years of unarmed white deaths to the one year of unarmed black deaths. That's not what I'm doing. I'm not sure how people got that from the video. Let me break down what I was actually doing. There are three segments to the video. The first segment, I'm showing you the number of police interactions in 2020 versus the amount of unarmed black deaths in 2020. The point of that is no one knew the amount of police interactions or the amount of deaths, but when you see them side by side, it puts things into context. You can still feel like 18 is too many, but when you put it in comparison to the amount of interactions, it changes the perception. The second segment was about, is it getting better or worse? That's when I showed you the picture of the graph from the New York Police Department showing that in 1971, they killed 93 people. But in 2010, they only killed eight people. As I said, you can still feel like eight is eight too many. But the question is, is it getting better or is it getting worse? And graphically, you can see that it's actually getting better. Now, in the third segment, that's when I brought up the total amount of unarmed white deaths from 2015 to present day. And I showed that that number is 221. Now, what is the point of me bringing up this number? Is it to compare nine years of unarmed white deaths to one year of black deaths? No. What did I say immediately after that part of the segment? From 2015 to 2024, unarmed, 221 victims. Over 200 unarmed white people killed by the police. And you've never heard any of their names. Nowhere in that segment did I compare the 221 unarmed white deaths to the 18. I never did that. The point I was hoping people would see is that they haven't shown you any of the white names because if the news was to report on unarmed black and white deaths, it ceased to be a race issue. And you can't politicize that. Out of all the unarmed white deaths since they've been collecting this data, you don't know any of their names, but we know the black names, which makes you feel like it's only happening to you. And then when you tell someone, no, unarmed white people are killed by the police too, the rebuttal is maybe they are, but they're not hunted and killed as egregiously as when they kill us. If you've seen a George Floyd video, then of course that's how you're going to feel. But you would only feel that way if you never knew about a guy named Tony Templer. Tony Templer, who I'm going to make a video on, died very similar to George Floyd, but the cops sat on him for 14 minutes as opposed to nine. But no one knows his name. That's my point. Why didn't they politicize Daniel Shaver, the unarmed white kid who was shot by the police literally because he leaned on a wall? Why didn't they show you Duncan Limp, the man who died the night before Breonna Taylor? who mysteriously was shot while he was in his bed, according to his lawyer. And then the next day, that's Breonna Taylor's story, who we now know was not in her bed when she was shot. It's to make it a race issue. That's the whole point. People were defending points that I wasn't even making. That's how rigid people's perceptions are. They accuse you of speaking and talking points because that's the only way that they know how to hear. They only have arguments against talking points. They don't have any nuance. When people ask me why I like Trump and then I tell them that I don't believe in political power, they don't understand how to have that conversation. If you attack Democrats, people only know how to receive that as your pro-Republican. They're not able to actually hear in nuance. They only hear in talking points. And it's frustrating because it's like, how will we ever get anywhere if that's how all of our conversations are? As always, any comment is welcome. I'll see you on the next post. Thank you all for watching. Peace.